Hello, and welcome to our Frequently Asked Questions for Employers. I'm Alice Skens, Chief Operating Officer and CFO at New Jersey Business and Industry Association, and I'm joined by Michael Shadiak, Partner and Chair of Labor and Employment Law Practice Group for Connell Foley. Thanks for joining me, Mike. Thank you, Alice. We've been talking over the last few days about what a challenging time this is for employers um, and businesses around specifically the change, changing rules and dynamics related to uh, paid leave and job protections. And we were hoping just to get through a few questions. These are our most frequently asked questions over the last two weeks from our members. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So I'd first like to start with a fairly broad question, which is um, what employment options do employers have uh, to address the current situation if they're not operating at full or even partial capacity and they may need to reduce their workforce? Absolutely. Great question. We've been feeling this a lot over the last couple of days. Before I answer that, I just want to say a few things. First, again, Alice, thank you very much. I also want to thank NJBIA, not only for today's opportunity, but for the opportunity for our firm, Connell Foley, to serve as NJBIA's employment law resource for its member businesses. Uh, I also want to just say at the beginning, um, the situation involving COVID-19, it's a fluid situation. Uh, there, as there are many new laws, many new regulations, a lot of new government advice that's coming out daily. Um, so we have to stay on top of this as it's developing. And every personnel action really has to be analyzed based upon the facts that are presented for that particular employer their size of number of employees they have, the factual scenario, the industry that they're in. So the information that we'll provide today, Alice, is general information, but I always suggest every business should be conferring with their own employment attorney as to the specifics that arise relative to their, their particular industry and business. Um, so let's talk about that first question. Great question. Every employer is asking that question uh, throughout New Jersey now. So there are three options that every employer needs to consider. One, stay employed. Number two, a furlough. Number three, a layoff. All three are different. So let's look at each uh, in order. So when we talk about keeping employees employed, one thing we always have to make sure we're complying with is the governor's executive order number 107 that he issued on March 21st. Please know if you are an essential business in which you can then remain open, or if you are a non-essential business, meaning your employees are to work home to the extent that they can, right? But certain people can go into the workplace, such as essential administrative personnel. So please, I, I, I implore everybody, look at Executive Order 107, know what businesses are essential, according to the state of New Jersey and which are not. One footnote to that, uh, March 24th, after the executive order was issued, the uh, state did amend the list of essential businesses to add mobile phone retail and repair shops, bicycle shops, livestock feed stores, nurseries and garden centers, and farming equipment stores. So if you do read executive order 107 and don't see them there, that's because they were added on March 24th, just as a footnote. Also as another footnote, please make sure you're providing your employees who are traveling to work with what we're calling a travel letter. So that's going to give them the opportunity to commute to work. And if they are stopped by the authorities and asked, where are you going? They will be able to present a letter from the employer explaining where they work, the name of the business, that they are commuting to or from work. And you also want to give the name of someone in the office let's say an executive level position and a phone number that they can call to verify what the employee is representing to the officer is accurate. So that's just another little practice tip. We're helping all our clients with those type of letters. So let's get into these issues. If you're going to keep your employees employed, the big issue we have to consider, are these employees non-exempt or are they exempt under the wage and hour laws? That is the critical threshold issue every employer needs to first look at when they're dealing with their workforce. So what are we talking about? So your non-exempt employees, people who are paid on an hourly basis, automatically non-exempt, or people paid on a salaried basis, but they don't meet one of the exemptions under the federal law, executive, administrative, professional, outside sales, high-level computer professionals. Any employers out there with questions about the exemptions, Google FLSA, Fair Labor Standards Act, Fact Sheet 17A. All the exemptions will come up. 
the fastest way for you to get that information at your fingertips to make an analysis as to whether your employees actually meet any of those exemptions. So let's say we're dealing with your non-exempt employees, okay? And you're keeping business open, but you have to cut back their hours and cut back their pay. Can you do that? Yes. As to your non-exempt employees, they only get paid for the hours that they work. So if you need to cut back their hours and cut back their pay, you can do that in accordance with the wage and hour laws. Now, as to your exempt employees, very different scenario, very different laws would apply. So there are really a couple viable options for exempt employees in this scenario. One is if they are not going to be performing any work, your business is open, but they cannot perform their duties. Maybe they can't even perform them remotely, okay? So if they do not perform any work in the whole work week, then you do not have to pay them. But if they're working remotely and they're performing any work during that week, answering emails, returning clients' calls, dealing with business issues, then you have to pay them by law for the full week. So if you're going to tell your exempt employees, stay home, do not work this week, make that very clear to them, put that in writing, that's my suggestion. You may even want to retrieve their phone so that they have no uh, issue with potentially resolving or having that, that desire to do so, okay? Now, the other thing you can do is you can reduce an exempt employee's hours of work and correspondingly reduce their pay. But under the law, this will have to be done for a period of time, not on an ad hoc basis. So maybe you wanna do this for a month or two months, given the current fluid situation, but you can do that. Another caveat, if you drop their salary, it can't be below the weekly salary established for exempt employees under federal law, which is $684 per week. So if you're thinking of reducing their salary, please keep that in mind. Another very important consideration, everything I'm talking about is subject to, is that employee though subject to a collective bargaining agreement where the terms are set forth in that agreement and you'll have to negotiate with the union? Or do these employees that you're looking to cut their hours and pay have an employment contract that sets forth what their rate of pay will be or their annual salary? Because there may be an argument that if you unilaterally change their rate of pay, or their salary, arguably, right, the employee may say that is a breach of my employment contract. So I know businesses are dealing with this issue. Employees have been very understanding. In fact, I read an article this morning that General Motors has done this with their executives. They've trimmed back their time, they've trimmed back their salary, their bonus package. And although they may be subject to a contract, there was a negotiation with those employees to reach a fair agreement given the circumstances and we're all in this together. So something to consider there as to anyone with a contract. Now, as far as unemployment benefits, you may say, well, if they're still working part-time, can they still get unemployment benefits? Yes, in New Jersey, the Department of Labor has made that clear. They can get partial unemployment benefits through the state of New Jersey. How about their health benefits? Would they continue? Yes, they would, okay? Now, I've also know that the stimulus package as we're speaking, and this is being recorded on March 26, 2020, yeah. is making its way through Congress. The bill that the Senate passed does include a provision that if you keep your employees employed during this time, and not only may there be a payment for that business, also the loan may be forgiven, it may also be uh, interest-free. So as the law develops, it's something certainly to keep your eye on during these times. Okay, so that's your first option, keep them employed. Option two, a furlough. What's a furlough? A furlough is basically a break in service, an administrative leave. Technically, these individuals would remain your employees of your company. Okay? They're expected to come back when this crisis is over. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute, when they're on a furlough, do they get paid? Let's go back to what we just talked about, non-exempt employees, only get paid for time they worked. So if they're on a furlough and they're not working from home, then they wouldn't get paid. Next question we get, but can they use their New Jersey paid sick leave? Answer is yes. Okay. The New Jersey paid sick leave, remember, is very broad. It's not just when the employee is sick. So if your business is closed by order of the governor due to the public health emergency, 
they can elect to use their paid sick leave. Can you as a business owner require them to use their paid sick leave? No, it's the employee's statutory right and benefit, they can elect to use it. And they would give certain, whoever it is in your organization that needs to receive that notice, they have to make sure they're giving them proper notice that they wanna use their available paid sick leave. How about your exempt employees? I'll go back to what I said earlier, very special rules. If they are furloughed, okay, are they working, if, uh, at none at all? Are they working a partial week? Okay, we have to keep these considerations in mind based upon what I just said uh, three minutes ago. Unemployment, can people who are furloughed seek unemployment? Answer is yes. Okay, they can apply to the state of New Jersey for unemployment benefits. Please make sure when you are furloughing your employees, our advice to our clients, give them a letter explain the situation, explain that they can apply for unemployment, and make sure you're providing them the New Jersey form that's known as BC-10, the BC-10 form. That's instructions for claiming unemployment benefits. Nothing new relative to the coronavirus. This form's been around for years, so employers may not know about it, but very easy to find. Just Google New Jersey BC-10 form. It's gonna be the first thing that pops up on your Google search. Fill out part one, Part two is pre-printed by the state of New Jersey. Make sure you're giving that to your employees. You may say, well, what about their health insurance if they're furloughed? Generally, they would not be entitled to stay on the plan as an active employee. It would be a COBRA event or the New Jersey mini COBRA, depending upon the size of your company. So they would have to elect continuation coverage and pay the full premium to continue their benefits. However, what I've been advising our clients is contact your healthcare carrier because some of them I know, and I won't list any names, but some of the carriers are putting programs in place to deal with this crisis we're all in. And what they're doing is they're relaxing the actively employed requirement in order for your people to stay on the plan. I think they're doing putting that in place for about 60 days. So my suggestion to all your employers out there, Call your carrier, talk to your broker, find out if your carrier is offering any program like that so that you know, can we keep our folks on the plan and maybe just deduct their share of the premium or must they go to continuation coverage and pay the same, the full premium? Okay, now, option three, a layoff. You say, well, well, what's different between a furlough and a layoff? Remember, a furlough, technically, they're still your employees. They're expected to come back. A layoff, they're separated. They're no longer your employee, they're separated. So for your non-exempt and exempt folks who are laid off, they could seek unemployment benefits through the state of New Jersey, give them the BC-10 form that we just spoke about. How about their health insurance? Well, again, now they're no longer your employee. So that's going to be a continuing uh, situation, COBRA or the New Jersey mini COBRA, and then they'll have to pay the full premium. Remember, there may be WARN Act considerations, and, and Alice and I will talk about that in just a minute. Also consider, are the people you're contemplating laying off a member of a union? Are they subject to a collective bargaining agreement? If so, please confer with the union, review that collective bargaining agreement, because there likely will be layoff provisions in that agreement that would have to be complied with. And some of the collective bargaining agreements actually requires severance to be paid to the union workers during a layoff. So please look into that, make sure we're not inviting any unfair practice charges uh, on behalf of the union. Okay, um, now, when you lay these people off, you say, well, wait a minute, I like these people. They're good workers, I wanna bring them back. Can you do that? Well, technically, if you lay them off, you have to rehire them when you're reopened for business. So our tip to all our clients, we're telling them is be careful when deciding to do that, because if you are streamlining your workforce and you may not be able to bring back all of your entire employees, be careful as to how you're bringing people back, which employees you're bringing back, and make sure you have a legitimate business reason if you're not bringing back certain employees so that it's not based on any alleged discriminatory reason. Okay? now. Those are our three options, Alice. Uh, we've been giving employers this, this guidance all week. They have found it very helpful, kind of distills in their mind the three buckets that they need to consider. Great, great. I appreciate you clarifying that. That's, that's a lot to, lot to consider, so I appreciate you breaking yeah, sure. it down. So for businesses that have been deemed non-essential per the governor's order, 
um, and because of lack of business, they need to lay off workers. Um, can they do that even if one of the workers selected for layoff is out of work for a COVID reason? Yeah, that's a great question. One we're getting a lot, very sticky issue, very sensitive issue, uh, let's be honest. Uh, now, I think what that question that you're getting is based on is everyone may be familiar with the new law that came out in New Jersey back on March 20. And it's uh, the bill is AB or Assembly Bill 3848. And let me read to you a provision from that bill. Uh, and it says, an employer shall not terminate or otherwise penalize an employee if the employee requests or takes time off from work based on the written or electronically transmitted recommendation of a medical professional licensed in New Jersey that the employee take that time off for a specified period of time because the employee has or is likely to have an infectious disease. So I think that the employers that are asking this question are saying, well, wait a minute, if the person is in that position, does that mean now I can't lay them off? That's a, it's an interesting question. It's a sensitive question. But I believe that there is an argument for employers that if they are shut down, they are not an essential business. They should not be operating except for people working remotely. Or they need to lay off people because they just simply don't have the payroll to meet the requirements and demands of their full workforce and they need to lay off their staff. There is an argument to say that forms a legitimate business reason. You are not laying this person off because they have the virus or because they're caring for someone with the virus. You're doing this as a business concern. So others may disagree with that position, but that is how we're advising employers these days given the circumstances, which again is, is very fluid. It is a fact sensitive analysis. So as I said in the beginning, please, if you're in that position, confer with your employment attorney first, get his or her opinion based upon your particular factual scenario. Great, great, thanks. So let's talk about businesses that were deemed essential. So they are open uh, due to the executive order. Uh, they're pra practicing distancing and all of the requirements about being open for worker safety but they don't have any working uh, uh, remote work capabilities for their employees. And yet they have an employee that doesn't want to come in for fear of contracting the virus, but really has no medical reason for that decision. How does, how does an employer handle that? Yeah, another great question. Uh, you're get, giving me good ones today, Alice. <laughs> These are good. So um, we're dealing with the fear issue. So let's go back, non-exempt versus exempt. If it's a non-exempt employee, okay, they can elect to use any available New Jersey paid sick leave that they have available. That's their right to elect to use it. Okay. Now, if they decide not to elect to use their paid sick leave and they're not working because they can't work remotely, according to the question, they wouldn't be paid. Because remember, non-exempt employees are only paid for time they work. Okay. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute. This person has a fear. They're not sick. They just have a fear of coming in all their other coworkers are coming in. You don't come in, you're disciplined, you're fired. Um, look, in normal times, uh, maybe I can, I understand that, that rationale, that reasoning, but in my experience over the last two or three weeks, employers are being very understanding uh, about the situation. We're not quite sure why that individual is concerned to come in. Maybe they have asthma, maybe they have uh, anxiety, and they feel being in the workplace would just exacerbate their their own health situation. So I've been uh, suggesting to employers that they be flexible in these times, especially given the, uh, the sensitivities that everybody has to their own health situation. Um, now, again, if it's an exempt employee, they too can elect to use their paid sick leave. Now, if they don't use their sick leave or they don't have any left, and I'm talking about an exempt employee, but they choose not to work or they choose not to come in, so for a personal reason, they are taking off of work. If they are off of work for the full workday, the full workday, okay, they do not have to be paid for that day. And I'm talking about an exempt employee. The reason is under the Federal Fair Labor Standards Act, the wage and hour law, there's something called the salary basis test. And that's what speaks to if an exempt employee works one hour in a week, they get paid the whole week. But if they take off a full day for a personal reason and don't perform any work, then they don't have to be paid for that day. So that's a breakdown between your non-exempt and exempt employees. 
Great, great, thanks. So you mentioned the Warren Act a few minutes ago. Um, if a business is subject to the Warren Act, requiring a 60-day notice for layoffs, uh, but they, they really can't afford to carry uh, those folks uh, at this point for 60 days, uh, what, what are they required to do? Yeah, so remember there are two Warren Acts here that we're dealing with for New Jersey employers. There's the Federal Warren Act, and then there is what is called the New Jersey Mini Warren Act. Right. So we have to make sure and determine, does either act apply to us? Let me just tell you what the criteria would be under both laws. For the Federal Warren Act, it's any business with 100 or more employees, excluding part-time, or 100 or more employees, including part-time, who work a combined total of at least 4,000 regular hours per week. Okay. For the New Jersey Mini Warren Act, okay. It's any entity that has 100 or more full-time employees. Okay, now with those thresholds in mind, let's look at what they consider a mass layoff. Under federal law, it results in an employment loss of at least 33% of the workforce at a single site of employment during any 30-day period, provided at least 50 employees are affected by the layoff. If 500 employees or more are affected, that one third requirement doesn't apply. Now for New Jersey, mass layoff, that's one that results in an employment loss at an establishment during any 30 day period for 500 or more full-time employees or for 50 or more full-time employees representing one third or more of the employee's establishment. So those are the requirements. That's what we're talking about as far as the Federal and State Warrant Act presently they would both require 60 days notice to the employees. Now you may say, wait a minute, how could I have possibly, as a business owner, given 60 days notice, because none of us could have foreseen this happening 60 days ago, that there would be this pandemic and we would all be shut down by the governor, okay? So under the federal law, there is a defense called the unforeseeable business circumstances. Exactly, how could we have foreseen this 60 days to give people notice? So in that situation, you're just required to give as much notice as is practical to your employees about the economic situation and if a layoff is necessary. Another thing under the Federal Warrant Act, the layoff would have to be for six months or more in order for these notice requirements to be in effect. So if you're thinking, well, we're gonna do a layoff, but maybe it's through the end of June, maybe through July, and then the intent is to bring back, re-employ our employees, then these notice provisions would not apply under the federal law. Let's take a, a quick look at the New Jersey mini warn. Okay, now New Jersey does not have the unforeseeable business circumstances defense. However, it does provide a six month layoff exception, just like the federal law, but the New Jersey twist is you then as the employer have to reinstate that person within six months. Okay. And also, New Jersey has what they call a national emergency defense. And again, given the times we live in, uh, President Trump has certainly declared a national emergency. Uh, in my estimation, that too would provide a rational basis for why you're not giving 60 days notice. Now, many of you watching this video may say, wait a minute, Mike and Alice, why are you talking about a 60-day notice period? I thought in New Jersey it was a 90-day notice period. Yes. New Jersey's law was amended in, in January of 2020 to increase the notice period from 60 to 90 days. But that law doesn't go into effect until July 19th of this year. So right now, it's a 60-day notice period. Now, you may hear from a lot of legal commentators or attorneys that they may say, well, wait a minute. If you lay off your folks now and that layoff continues into July and lasts longer, then July 19th, did you have to give them 60 or 90 days notice? In other words, is the law retroactive to when the layoff started? Interesting question. To my knowledge, there really is no guidance about that. But going back to where we started, if this is going to be a layoff that's going to be six months or less in duration, the notice provisions are not going to apply. Right. Okay. So, um, we've had a lot of questions uh, for looking for clarity for the expansion of uh, uh, paid sick leave and expanded FMLA at the federal level sure. and trying to understand, you know, we just came off the uh, in increase in paid sick leave changes in January in New Jersey. And so 
Can you just give a sense for an employee in New Jersey, for an employer, what is the bank? What, what fully are they supposed to be providing yep. their employees given the pandemic just to comply with both sides of the state and federal regulations? Great, great question. Very common question these days and certainly understandable. So let's break it down into three categories of, of employers by size. Okay? So any employer that has more than 500 employees, the new federal laws, and what I mean by that are the expanded FMLA and the emergency paid sick leave, do not apply because by law, they are exempted uh, from those, those particular requirements. So all those employees in New Jersey would then be entitled to, by way of paid sick leave, would be the New Jersey paid sick leave law. Now remember, they give 40 hours of paid sick leave, but well, some of your employees may have used already all or most of their paid sick leave. So you really want to look at your records to find out what each employee has available. You may even want to make them aware of how much time that they have available. Okay, now with that said, that's the paid sick leave. But remember, okay, employees of this size, for a company of this size, still have other statutory rights to leave. They can get leave under the FMLA if they are sick or they wanna care for a family member. Don't worry about the new law. I'm moving on to what even what the law has been for the last 30 years. They have FMLA rights if they need leave to care for themselves or to care for a family member under the FMLA. They also could seek leave if they're ill under the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's unpaid, but they could seek that leave. They can also seek leave if they need to care for a family member under the New Jersey Family Leave Act. Okay, so they can get leave under those laws as well. So you have to contemplate them. Everyone's getting focused and caught up these days on just the two new federal laws. You gotta remember all our other employment laws out there that can give someone leave. And then on the other side of the aisle, if they are on leave, is there any income replacement benefit available for that employee? Sure, through the state of New Jersey. So if they're on leave for their own medical issue, they can apply to the state of New Jersey for short-term disability benefits. If they're on leave to care for a family member, they can apply to the state of New Jersey for New Jersey family leave insurance benefits. Okay, so those are for your very large employers, over 500 employees. Let's go to the next level. So you have less than 500 employees, but more than 50 employees, okay? And now in that bracket, both the new federal paid sick leave and expanded FMLA, as well as the New Jersey paid sick leave apply to all those businesses, both laws. Now, a lot of questions that are being asked by employers, very good question, are those paid sick leave, are they stacked? Do they get the New Jersey paid sick leave plus the additional 80 hours under the emergency federal paid sick leave? Um, it's a little unclear at the moment, but in my interpretation of the law and the guidance that has come out so far, that is what is intended. That is the most conservative approach. They would get their New Jersey paid sick leave and be able to get the additional 80 hours of the federal paid sick leave as well. We are waiting on, on regulations from the U.S. Department of Labor to come out. Hopefully that's one of the clarifications that are, that are made uh, there. Similarly, like we just said for the larger employers, the FMLA, the ADA, the NJFLA also still apply to grant people leave and they can go to the state for short-term disability benefits or New Jersey family leave insurance benefits as well. So now let's look at our last category, which are employers that are under 50 employees. Now, from everything that we're reading, there may be an exemption for employers that have 50 or less employees. How will we know that? Well, the US Department of Labor would need to pass a regulation. Per our understanding of what we've read, that regulation is anticipated to come out in April of this year. So we don't know yet for sure if employers with 50 or less employees will be exempt or not, but they will be coming out with criteria, factual criteria, and if the employer can meet that criteria to show that compliance with the law would impede the viability of the business as a going concern, then there would likely be an exemption from the new federal laws for that particular employer, okay? But remember, if you have less than 50 employees, then the ADA still applies and the New Jersey Family Leave Act still applies to your business. 
because you only need 30 or more employees for the New Jersey Family Leave Act to apply. So your employee comes to you, they have a family member or a loved one who is sick and they need to care for them and need leave. You gotta remember, if you have 30 or more employees, the New Jersey Family Leave Act applies as well. And then they can go to the state of New Jersey and seek the New Jersey Family Leave Insurance benefits. So always think about it this way. And when we do our programs for NJBIA, Alice, as you know, we always tell the audience, think of leave issues as two railroad tracks. Railroad track one is pursuant to what, are you gonna grant this employee leave from work? The FMLA, ADA, NJFLA, paid sick leave, okay? Railroad track two is while they're on approved leave, is there any income replacement benefit available for that employee? such as short-term disability benefits, New Jersey Family Leave Insurance benefits, maybe workers' comp if they got injured or contracted the virus on the job. So we always have to think of the two railroad tracks okay, and understand what bracket we fall in as far as the size, how many employees do we really have? Right, okay. So, so last question. Um, so some of our businesses now are moving, we're thinking ahead and moving from their response mode into a recovery mode. Um, and the questions we're getting are about uh, folks that are uh, laying off uh, people. And during that layoff, um, they may have had employee, internal employee policies that indicated there was a PTO payments made at, or they would pay out the accrued PTO. Okay. What happens, they're thinking through, well, what happens if I, if I rehire these people? Um, I've, I've just paid out whatever PTO uh, before when they left do I give them a new bank going forward? Yeah, yeah. another great question. Um, so here would be my initial question. If a client or employer called me about that and with that question, my first question to them would be is, why are you paying out unused paid time off? Okay. Now remember, under New Jersey law, there's no law that requires you to pay out unused vacation time. The New Jersey Paid Sick Leave Act does not require you as a business to pay out unpaid sick time. So why would a company be paying out paid sick leave? But really it's one of two reasons. Either they have made that commitment in their employee handbook. They've told the employees in their handbook, our policy is we will pay this out at the time of termination. Okay. If that is your policy, okay, but you no longer want to pay out this time. Here's a little tip to look at. In every employee handbook, there should be a disclaimer page. The first substantive page of the handbook per New Jersey law would be a disclaimer. In the handbooks that we draft, we always include in that disclaimer a sentence that will say management reserves the right to amend, suspend, or terminate any benefit at any time. So given the times we're in, given the payroll crunches that employers are feeling at the present time, okay, you could, as an employer, say, we know what our policy is, but we are suspending the use of vacation time. We are suspending the payout of vacation, including at the time of termination, for purposes of a payable reason, and we're just trying to stay viable as a business. Now, with that said, be mindful, the New Jersey paid sick leave law is a little different, okay? Because they still have rights to that. So if an employee says, boss, can I use my vacation time? As I said, you could suspend that. An employee says, boss, can I use my paid sick leave? That's their statutory right to use. You can't say no, that's suspended, right? They have a statutory right to the New Jersey paid sick leave. But in both scenarios, neither one has to be paid out upon termination. Now to the second part of, of the question that Alice raised, now you're bringing people back. We, we've come out of this crisis, you're rehiring people. What do you do with all this benefit time? If someone's used it all, do they get another bank? So that really is an interesting question. For purposes of vacation, my approach to that question is, what is your policy going to be? Because remember, in New Jersey, you don't have to offer your employees any vacation time. I would say you may not have many employees because who would potentially work there, but in this scenario, if you're rehiring the person and they've used all their vacation time, I think that's gonna be a managerial policy decision. Do we let them start accruing more time again? Or for those people who already used it, you know, that's, they, they use their allotment for the year. As far as the New Jersey paid sick leave, 
a little bit different question, because remember what the law says, they're entitled to 40 hours of paid sick leave in a benefit year. So if your employees have used all 40 hours and now you rehire them, do we have to let them accrue more time? That's a very interesting question. I do not have the answer to that. I don't think there is an answer out there to, to my knowledge. But I think if the employer relied on the law, which says employees can receive and use up to 40 hours of paid sick leave a year, and they've used it all already, I think that at least is a legitimate, viable response to that employer if you're not going to let them use or accrue more sick time. Um, and again, remember all of this that we're talking about too is subject to if there is any contract that the employee has in place, because you really would have to then have a discussion and negotiate a change with that employee. Very good, Mike. Mike, thanks so much. Absolutely. Really appreciate it answering answering these really important questions. Um, I would tell our members if you are interested and need some additional guidance, you can reach uh, Connell Foley and Mike through our member portal at our legal resource page. You'll find a fillable form there if you need additional legal support. In the meantime, keep reading NJBT and our member alerts. We'll try to keep you updated as soon as we know uh, as things are changing and visit our research page at njbia.org slash coronavirus. Many of the items and documents and executive orders that Mike has mentioned, you can find those there. Those links are there. Hope you found this helpful and stay well. Stay Thanks. well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.